All across the heartland, farmers and rural communities are coming up with some innovative approaches in dealing with energy costs and environmental concerns, like these folks you're about to meet in Minnesota. Benson's your classic small rural community. There's a real personality to a small community. Reed Infanson's family has owned and published the Benson, Minnesota weekly newspaper for nearly 50 years. But like other small communities, he knows the challenges that come along with that small town charm. How are you doing? Good. Those higher paying jobs, head of household jobs, are, are difficult to find in a smaller community. There's not a lot of those jobs. Uh, so the kids go away and they go to college and, and they find jobs elsewhere. We're about a week away. In fact, next Wednesday, these turkeys will be on the truck. Greg Langmo's family has been raising turkeys in Minnesota for 50 years. They're sitting here at 17 weeks of age right today, and uh, they probably weigh around 21 pounds apiece. 21 pounds in 17 weeks means these birds are eating quite a bit, and that means quite a bit of something else. Manure. Manure. This is 90% yeah. manure. 90% manure. And when you raise almost 50,000 turkeys at a time, that manure starts piling up. And in a state that raises 46 million turkeys a year, farmers like Greg have a challenge of their own, what to do with all that litter. For decades, the solution was to spread it on farm fields as fertilizer. One of the problems we have in Minnesota is that we either have crops in the field or they're frozen most of the time. We have a very short window in the spring and a very short window in the fall after harvest when we can land spread. You were stacking it up, piling it up all around the county. That was the only way, that's the only use there was for it. And rural residential property uh, owners were concerned that there was a lot of stockpiling going on. It wasn't being handled in a, uh, in a way that they were comfortable with. What were they upset about? <clears throat> they didn't like the odor. They didn't like the uh, runoff. They didn't like the flies. So Reed Anfinson's town needs jobs, and Greg Langmo needs a better way to get rid of his turkey litter. Two separate problems. Well, enter Terry Walmsley. My kids actually call me a poopologist. He's actually an executive with the British company FibroWatt. And just about the time that Minnesota turkey farmers were thinking of ways to jettison turkey litter into space, Terry and his FibroWatt friends said something, well, shocking. There's electricity in that there poop. This is a unique material that not only is a renewable resource, can produce renewable energy, but it actually is doing you know, an end benefit by managing something that is produced in excess. FiberWatt's plan, build a giant generating plant that burns turkey litter to create electricity. Reaction from the locals? Extreme skepticism. FiberWatt already has three plants generating juice in Great Britain, so it didn't take long for people to believe it could be done. But did they want tons of burning poultry poop a quarter mile down the road? Biggest concern was the smell. I'll bet you it really stinks. There's no way that turkey litter can't stink. Anybody who has been in the country around the turkey barns, you're driving by it, the wind blows your direction, it stinks. Because, you know, once you get a, a plant like this located in your community, you're going to live with it forever, your lifetime. If the plant smelled, people wouldn't want to live here. It didn't take much to get Greg Langmo on board with the plan, but townspeople in Benson needed proof this deal didn't stink. So FiberWatt invited Reed and Benson community leaders to tour their UK facilities. And they did the sniff test. The initial sniff test. We went there with our noses. <laughs> As the mayor had said, we did the sniff test. And it passed. Right away, the odor was the big concern. I mean, it was, this was is your front page news. Big concern. Odor was the number one thing. After Reed's successful olfactory excursion to England, his paper editorials began supporting the project. And after town meetings, more study, more trips, and more sniffing, Benson became home to North America's first turkey litter burning electricity generating plant. It's called Fibermen, as in Minnesota. And for the first time, folks around here started calling turkey litter something else. We're in what's called the fuel hall, and it's divided it really into three areas, fuel reception, fuel storage, and fuel processing. You keep calling it fuel. I was gonna say, this looks like poop to me. It, it, it certainly, to most people, it would. Our plant operates all the time. So we have to have enough capacity, ability to move all of these trucks in, 
deal with them as they come. We, we may be managing upwards of 100 to 120 trucks a day. And these huge scoops just drop down and pull that stuff up and put it in the back there. And from the fuel hall onto a small conveyor belt that takes the litter to a boiler to be burned. Looks like fuel to you now? Does it look like fuel? Or this, like is, this is about as good as it looks. Uh, it's screened down uh, roughly to two inches or less. Part of our process is to screen and to delump, mm -hmm. to try to remove those large patties, if you want to call them. Delump. Delump. <laughs> delump the patties, that's right. <laughs> Just a reminder what we're dealing with here. That's right, right. that's <laughs> correct. <laughs> And once that fuel is in the burner, the process is pretty much what you learned in science class. Burn the litter, boil the water, make steam, drive a turbine, and generate electricity. Still don't believe you can make power out of poultry poop? Well, I've got your proof right here. This meter shows you how much electricity is being produced at this very second. 62 megawatts. That's about enough power for 50,000 homes. FiberWatt isn't going to put any 1,500 megawatt coal-fired plants out of business, but agricultural producers like Greg now do have another option for their litter. Take this and get it out of here, and it's done in one day. They'll, they'll haul this barn out in one day. A big solution for you. Boom, it's gone. And Benson has about 100 more full-time jobs. In a town this size, that's a pretty big deal. That's a pretty big deal. In fact, one of those jobs even went to Greg Langmo. He's now Fiberman's fuel manager. And of course, Fiberman isn't in business just to help out turkey farmers and townsfolk. It's all about the electricity. Fiberman has a 21-year contract to supply electricity to the power grid. The plant uses a renewable energy source that, unlike wind and solar, is always available. By and large, this country, the state, is reliant on fossil fuels. We are a base load facility. We can operate in theory 24 hours a day, seven days a week, producing renewable energy. In the spirit of full disclosure, we should tell you that turkey litter does smell when it's burned. But because of lots of walls, doors, and a serious air handling system, the only place that stinks around here is inside the Fiberman plant. I checked it out for myself. In downtown Benson, according to one man with a nose for news, nothing. Nobody, there's no smell with it at all.